Hello everyone. It for those of for the five of you actually keeping track of me and my schedule on my stream. This is the first time in about two and a half months since I've been on stream, so welcome back. It has been a in educational time away. Time to rest, recuperate, and then willingly throw myself back into this meat grinder with these lunatics. Will my will my <laughs> will my sanity survive? Let's find out. Welcome to, <laughs> welcome to a new episode, our new series of Star Trek Adventures, uh, the role-playing game put on by Modifius. Uh, this this is going to focus on the adventures of the Sutherland class USS Concordia, as we go back to my uh, fan-created uh, sector of space known as the Lasai Expanse. Uh, the players are the same folks as those who were playing in the Deep Space 15, aka Cerberus Station game. So the voices may sound familiar. The characters are not, but we're going to have uh, occasional cameos from old friends. Uh, with that said, uh, it is our tradition that every episode start off with a log, and we have Gate Jumper as a as our captain. So, Mr. Gate Jumper, Captain Bashir, please take it away. Captain's log, star date eight four five three four point two. Boy, that's weird to say still. I'm just about to dock at the Mars base docks. It's been almost a year since the fallout with Starfleet Intelligence, after six months of meetings, inquiries, and trials, and a little personal time on an Orion colony. I am here to take command of the USS Concordia. The Concordia is a Sutherland class vessel. It's an exploratory science vessel with a crew of about 700. Our main mission will be to explore the Lasai Spans, which is by, why that I have been put in command after my experience with the Nighthawk in the Expanse. As part of our shakedown cruise, we'll be carrying diplomats to Deep Space 15 via the gravitational catapult orbiting Talar. We will be picking up the last of the crew at Deep Space 15 before heading out on this grand new adventure. End log. Okay. So we start. The camera starts with a large pan over shot of the Utopia Planitia shipyards orbiting Mars. Um, since the Borg attack 20 ish years ago, uh, that wiped out almost all existing infrastructure. Uh, the Utopia Planitia shipyards have been rebuilt with modern day technology. The ship, many of the ship docks are now repli docks, able to completely um, fabricate a pre programmed chassis of a starship in much less time it would take to fabricate individual bits, pieces, and solder them all together. Naturally, uh, this has increased starship production. Uh, uh, increased the rate of starship production uh, significantly to the point where Starfleet is actually running a crew shortage instead of a starship shortage. And Captain Bashir, you have arrived at Utopia Planitia, and without much uh, pomp or circumstance, are beaming over to your new ship. Camera zooms in to a nice uh, theatrical close-up zoom-out shot of Captain Bashir uh, energizing on a transporter pad. Uh, so, Captain Bashir, if you could please describe your character. Um, I am an Andorian. Um, young, uh, basically, I have was mainly in for science and ended up... Uh, getting dug along into a good year-long adventure on a uh, intelligence mission that ended up with uh, us kind of breaking the uh, band up. And uh, after spending that time in the Lasai Expanse, I am taking command and going back out to explore the new area and learn more about the Expanse itself. <laughs> Wonderful. And facing you, uh, shifting nervously from foot to foot with a uh, nervous but authentic grin on his face, is a Talaxian in Starfleet Commander colors. And that would be Commander Hadrix. 
And if you could please describe your character, uh, OG Nerd. I would say that he is about middle age ish. I mean, um, he's definitely been around the park here and there. Um, definitely with a smile on his face. Um, always kind of trying to, you know, kind of always kind of looking like he's a little uncomfortable in his uniform, but still enjoying the fact that he's there. Um, just beaming at the captain and, you know, ner yeah, a little nervous energy, just ready to get going. All right, I'll step down and shake your hand. Commander? Captain, a pleasure to meet you. I have been waiting for this for the moment since I got this in assignment. Uh, good, good. Um... I've been looking forward to this myself. Uh, is the rest of the bridge crew here? The bridge crew right now, I know, are going through their stations right now. They're, uh, I think, a couple of them on the bridge. We have one or two elsewhere. So, you know, I've kind of, well, I've run laps through here, not even being kidding. So, um Nervous energy. What can I say? So why don't I show you more around the ship, and then we can kind of meet the crew while we're there. Absolutely. Take it away. Okay. So we are heading down to the engineering section first. Where it is a buzz of activity with a gr series of nameless individuals and extras wandering about doing last minute touch-ups the warp core is currently off uh, it's normal blue red hum and the general vibration that it sends through the ship is missing but that's to be expected there is a uh, well this is where you meet your chief engineer uh, lieutenant commander moose reinhardt uh, that would be shizno's character please describe moose and what he's doing Moose is an older human. He is approximately in his 50s, 55. Um, he stands at 6'5", and he is not wearing your standard uniform. He's actually wearing uh, modified Jupiter, Jupiter variant overalls, uh, which are actually half off and the arms are tied around his waist. And Captain and uh, Commander, what you see is he has a tool belt on with a bunch of different assorted of different engineering tools, and he is currently arms crossed looking up at the ceiling as you can see a crewman who's upside down with uh, mag boots on, working on a panel. And uh, Moose just looks up like, okay, Hernandez, pull the panel off, and when you see the T-junction slide in the panel to the bottom of it, in your orientation, and then fill in it, fill it in with the uh, Suspension foam. That should take care of the rattling. There's a muffled yes, sir, as he bends over double, as sticks his body up in there and squirts the foam as desired. Speaking of foam, I think it's a fire! And that would be coming from the upper uh, catwalk as our resident Tellerite engineer insists on being a thorn in Moose's side. Lieutenant Commander, you might want to take a look at this. Uh, what are you doing now? <laughs> Sparks are flying, his beard's on fire. <laughs> Again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're going to have to go over a standard procedure on examining just standard EPS relays that are powered down. How are you doing that? Isn't it the red and the blue wire? Or is it the yellow and blue wire? Yellow's the ground. Ah, oh, damn. Uh, bud, do you want to uh, fly on over and just evaluate his work for me, please? <laughs> Thank you. A robotic thing that looks similar to an exocomp in almost no way. Uh, bobs and fl hovers and sparks his way across the uh, gap behind the warp core as the uh, telltale sound of the uh, engineering room doors open and close as Commander Hadrix and Captain Bashir enter. Well, everyone, Captain on deck. 
I nod and wave at everyone. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander? And Captain? Well, you don't have to be so formal, gentlemen. <laughs> Captain Bashir, this is... I'm sorry, Lieutenant Commander. I think... Do you prefer to be called Moose or Lieutenant... Or Commander Reinhardt? For anything official, I'm Lieutenant Commander Reinhardt, but for a normal conversation, just call me Moose. I see. Moose. <laughs> just has a big old grin. <laughs> he'll uh, reach out a hand to you and he'll uh, offer to shake your... Take your I'll hand shake you your hand. To. Firm grip. <laughs> this this is a big human. <laughs> and he's he you can tell that he definitely works out a lot. A moose, that's a Terran creature, isn't it? <laughs> oh yeah. The only thing a train fears is a moose on the railway. It, hush, falls over, <laughs> hush, hush falls over the crowd. <laughs> so you see, a bigger train is a locomotive engine. A bigger, you know what? I'll I'll show you later. I see. So, are we ready yet to uh, take off? Just about. Let's see here. And he's just gonna walk over to the panel and punch up a few things, and he's gonna. Slowly turn on the uh, deuterium injectors, and he's just gonna watch that ceiling for a moment and listen. Like, oh yeah, okay, rattling's gone. <laughs> okay, everyone, get ready to start up the warp core. Betty, if you would be so nice, please synchronize all stations. And the computer's voice chirps. Synchronizing st all stations to Starfleet Time Protocol in three, two, one. And then it chirps. There we go. So, are you doing the little tour of the ship? Yes. Yes, I am. Oh, she's a fine class. She's got some uh, interesting features, if I say so myself. From what I understand is uh, she is the new version of the Nebula class. So. I've done some research. I uh, I'm very interested in the uh, attachments. Which ones? <laughs> <laughs> All of them. Oh, she's gonna be a good little ship. Uh, I believe she's the first of her kind that's supposed to be self-sustaining on long-term exploration. I read a little bit about that. That is. We basically can do repairs out anywhere? Yes. Yeah, it'll be interesting to uh, see how that functions, and at the same time how uh, some other stuff functions, too. I'm sure you're aware that I'm not only a part of the original design and build team, but I'm also coming along because of some extra goodies attached to the ship. Well, it'll be great working with you then. I look forward to hearing more about this. I look forward to making sure it all works again, stays together. And do me one favor. Don't break my ship. I know it's your <laughs> ship, but it's also my ship too. I will do my best. <laughs> okay. That's all I can ask for. I would like to have a... After we get the rest of the crew together... Um, at Deep Space 15, I would like to have a meeting with all of the heads of department. I'll make sure to polish my boots and uh, <laughs> make sure I got the proper uh, jacket on. <laughs> Works for me, Lieutenant Commander. <laughs> Please, just call me Moose. All right, Moose. He'll just give a smile <laughs> and he'll just turn back to watching everyone work. <gasps> Captain, let's head off onto the sick bay. That's going to be the next major port of call. All right. Into sick bay. Uh, interior of the ship. No. Uh, ah, sorry. Let me start again. Inside the sick bay, several diagnostic beds, as is standard for most ships. The um, star. Okay, rotating tokens doesn't look all that great. <laughs> I kind of like it. <laughs> wait, wait, we're leaning. Oh, we're not even out of space. Ah. In inertial dampers had failed. Everyone, everyone for themselves. Okay. Ha. 
as you walk in uh, it smells very faintly of the of antiseptic and disinfectant sprays and you wander in and you come to your chief medical officer dr junet forliza and that would be spencer's character if you could please describe dr forliza yeah uh dr forliza is a uh denobulin ryzen hybrid um probably looks like he's about uh their mid 30s and they're just sort of looking over uh the bio beds making sure the medical supplies that they need are in order and as they hear the doors open he turns around just like ah uh, captain bashir commander hadrix Greetings. Hi there. How are you? Um, just getting acquainted to some new surroundings when I was on Deep Space 12 as long as I was. Um, taking, uh, getting assigned to a ship rather than a station takes a little bit of getting used to. Oh, you're telling me, being on a ship for quite a while, you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit coming together interestingly basically well when you went on a voyage as long as i have at one point you kind of have to really get to know some people and you have to really make sure you don't find anybody you don't care for i mean find people you don't find stay away from people I, you don't care for i, I understand uh, what you're trying to say commander, commander? <laughs> I, I will say um this place um certainly is no enterprise but it's Rather impressive. Oh, the Enterprise... The Enterprise has its charm, but something a little smaller, a little more quaint is going to be a lot more fun. Believe me, I've seen some of those huge Sovereign classes, and, well, I like this ship. Let's just put it that way. I'm starting to like it as well. Um, have... I think you actually read over uh, the service records of some of your senior crewmen yet. I haven't had quite a bit of a chance yet, but a little darts and pieces. Tell me about yourself. Oh, well, um, see, uh, went to Starfleet Medical, uh, graduated in the 98th percentile students. And um, this ship uh, was actually my first assignment. And he goes into his office for a second. And they pick up uh, what appears to be a framed picture. Oh, a couple of them, actually. And sort of brings them out, um, handing them to each of you. One of them uh, is just like what appears to be maybe a painting of some sort of uh, the USS Enterprise E. And um, another picture, he's in a more of a casual dress rather than Starfleet uniform, is... Um, actually, a picture of him with uh, the retired Admiral Picard and one Beverly Crusher. And what am I talking about with a Sovereign class right here? The the crown jewel of the Sovereigns. It was... I've definitely heard, heard of Captain yeah. Picard. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Admiral, but... Admiral retired. Mm. True. Yes. Uh... And I have definitely heard of Dr. Crusher. <laughs> she's she's lovely. I loved working with her. I can only imagine if half the stories that I heard while I was on the Academy are true about Dr. Crusher, that woman is some kind of amazing. Um, <laughs> if That's I may be so bold, uh, I believe that amazing is sugarcoating her. Most of what I've heard is blazing, Beverly. <laughs> um, that would be the now, just kind of looks at you like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I I personally have had a lot of experience with Admiral Rikers over the last few years, so I am very well aware of them. <laughs> yes, he's um, Admiral Riker is interesting. Um. I hear he's taken up the hobby of making pizza recently. It's I've heard it's quite good. <laughs> I've uh, met both of them, and um, they are very 
down to earth and uh, interesting individuals. But unfortunately, I was on the wrong side of the table with most of those conversations. But that's a story I mean, for another time. Of course. Um, once the two of you uh, end up having some free time, um, it appears that both of you actually still need your uh, routine physical before we're actually going through the expanse. So um, whenever you have the time, maybe after we dock at Deep Space 15, um, maybe we can get that over with? Absolutely. Of course. Um, just Please, a Kat. couple quick questions. Yes. Um, I've had a... I, I hope you stay around. I, my last uh, assignment, we have having doctors in and out on a regular <laughs> basis. <laughs> oh, um, I'm <laughs> sorry to hear that, Captain? Um... <clears throat> I can assure you I'll be around for a while. Good to know. I didn't get to know much of the doctors on the Nighthawk because they kept leaving. <laughs> oh, I can I can assure you I shall be around as long as I can, sir. Um, are we equipped with an emergency medical hologram? Um, actually, I don't quite know. Actually, um, GM says yes, you ha you are. Uh, it hasn't gone through the initialization stuff yet, so I don't actually have a proper token for it yet. I was just asking. Yes. <laughs> okay. Because um, the Nighthawk uh, Night was forbidden to have one. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, don't let me keep you. Um, I believe you still have to go and talk with... Uh, I believe their name is uh, Ensign Moore, our chief science officer. So um, I'll leave you two to it. Thank you, Doctor. Thank uh, you, Cap Doctor. Captain, I believe um, Ensign Moore is up on the bridge, on a duty station. Can you take me by the science department, please? Certainly. <laughs> and as they start to exit, you hear, for it was it just turned to uh, Lieutenant Krim. So some, Lieutenant Krim, could you prepare... Um, uh, just a cocktail of, and he'll list off uh, just X amount of, you know, medical drugs, just in case he he needs to relax. Because <laughs> this, this crew is interesting. Of course, Doctor. Thank you. Okay. So, we will take a quick detour to the science lab. Which is a currently a flurry of activity. Um... There is an ah, whose name didn't actually show up right on the token is a Lieutenant Junior Grade Alarak, a Kelpian science officer studying or specializing in basically anything is Xeno or Exo, uh, who is who is currently running a, all sorts of tricorder scans over a familiar face to the captain, a Togalau from the. Uh, I, yeah, as soon yeah. as I walk in, I go up and hug him. <laughs> At first, you feel uh, Togi's mass begin to shift and disperse around your hug. Then it, he remembers what a hug is and goes to hug you back. <laughs> How's it going, buddy? Uh, I know it's been a while. <laughs> this garden is pleased and confused, but mostly pleased. It is good to, it is good to sense your presence. Well, we're heading back out there, buddy. So, I'm glad to have you on board. This garden is pleased. Are the <laughs> rumors correct that we are heading back to the home garden? We are. And I'm hopefully, maybe you can t uh, see your family again. Ah, uh, yes, the, the larger garden the home home world yes that is the term i know it's been a long time not to mention the extra 600 years you had <laughs> um <laughs> but uh yeah we're heading back out there bud this garden is pleased mm. well uh, i don't want to bother you i 
I'll talk to you soon enough. Maybe we can uh, teach these new kids what karaoke night is. I This garden is slightly confused as to uh, the moose's lack of disco ball protocol. Understandable. We can show them the ways. Yes. Looking forward to that. <laughs> as you leave, uh, you can hear uh, Ensign Dresden and Lieutenant Alarak getting into a spirited debate whether or not Togi falls under uh, exobiology or exobotany. <laughs> I just <Yeah>. laughed. <laughs> now, what I once said was, considering he calls himself a garden, he's a it's by botany. But considering it is a sentient and living individual, it is also biology. I, uh, this garden is not an individual's per se, more of a collection of sentient spores. See? Spores. That's what I was talking about. See? So botany. As, I, as we're walking back out the door, look up my report. It's all in there. <laughs> Uh, and we will cut to the turbo lift, just in case the two of you wish to have any turbo lift discussions on your way to the bridge. <laughs> or do you wish okay. to stand there awkwardly? Oh, oh hell no! Uh... Not, not this, not this Galaxian! <laughs> Key Mass Effect music now! <laughs> uh... <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Yes. <laughs> so, Captain, what do you think of the crew so far? So far, so good. I still have a lot of reading to do on some of these, and I forgot about the physical. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, no, I'm very much looking forward to getting back out there. Yeah, it's. it, it looks like everything's going to be pretty good. and You know, I do have a good working relationship with the Nalu, so it seems like you also have a good working relationship with Togi and his people, which I cannot remember the race off the top of my head. Togalau. Oh, should be, should, should remember that. But yes, you know, um, so yeah, it's just, I've, I've, I, do you know anything about the Nalu? Um, I know some of the Nalu. I've had, uh, mainly I have run into the Vitross, the, quite a bit with the Scorpi. Uh, and, um, oh God, what are the cloners? The guitars are the cloners. The, are the, uh, the pirates then. Oh, so uh, Draven. They're Draven, is what I mainly have dealt with. The, the Nalu are an interesting race, and apparently were, our, our eyes were, oh, what's the term you guys use? Well, not you guys, the, um, Terrans. Um, wool was pulled over their eyes about what the Nalu really were, and I was in those negotiations. So they kind of, kind of liked my, you know, kind of got a thing for me. So you know, I got a thing for them. We got a thing for me. It's all good. Have you had any experience with the um, Scorpi? No, I have not. But I have read about those, and they scare me, honestly. Oh, they're not so bad. Um, just uh, yeah. We'll get to that when we get to that, I guess. <laughs> and on that note, nope. the door's open. <laughs> and you come out on the bridge. The bridge is most is still slightly dis, in a dishevelment. Many of the access panels below the consoles are open, and several technicians are finalizing c cables, connections. Um, someone's on a s hover ladder up above fixing a couple of the uh, LED lights. Apparently they were causing lens flares, and that's not a good thing. So, <laughs> ah, ah. no, ah. <laughs> and cue the music. Yeah, damn you, Abrams. Uh. Lagos just turns captain on the bridge. <laughs> yes, and uh, that would be your tactical officer, Lieutenant Lagos, who appears to be wearing a Starfleet uniform that is one size too small. Uh, defining every single curve of his muscular body. However, <laughs> the star of the show is currently hunched over his panel, uh, doing whatever it is science people do, probably sensor configurations and deflector dish stuff. That would be Ensign Moore, uh, who is Scotty's character. Uh, so, Scotty, 
you just what? hear more like cursing as the sensors are not aligning to correct specification, and he keeps having to repunch it in over and over and over. I will go and stand over the console that he's working on. <laughs> uh, more will turn, go, howdy, Captain, before he comes down and around and starts playing with the wires underneath it from down below. Captain, uh, this is Ensign Moore. Um, he's a little energetic. Well, energetic and annoyed that the sensors are not aligning the way that they need to be. Have you tried doing this? And I'll make an adjustment real quick on the uh, council. Okay, so this will be our first roll. Uh, so let's do a control plus science role for the captain, I guess. Okay. And if you have something along the lines of sensor operations or computer skill, uh, given, the given the current sh state of the ship, the ship will not assist. This will be just a difficulty one test. Okay. <clears throat> and... <laughs> and I guess because I have threat to spend this episode, I'm probably not going to spend really? on other things. You know, <laughs> I'll increase threat rate 19 to 20 just because. Oh, well, it doesn't, ah, matter. doesn't matter. You got two successes, so that's one momentum. And nice. I get less threat. Uh, so, Ensign Bohr, as you uh, um, crawl underneath your panel, the panel from the uh, from the uh, from the back side of the console, uh, the captain manages to uh, put in a arcane uh, series of commands. And for the first time, you're seeing that sensor op efficiency is 98% and holding for a change. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> Apparently, I, I, have some, I have things to learn, which I kind of figured around here. Understandable, Ensign. As I po I'll just pop up, like, through the hole under the console and then back up to the top row. <laughs> And like jump to my feet, and some more, and hold out my hand for a handshake. Uh, Captain Bashir. Well, it's rather exciting to be heading out. It's Give me more tips, Ensign. Uh, I can help you out with sensors. <laughs> yes, yeah, sensors. I'm still getting used to astrometrics. That's my bread and butter. Is that your specialty? That among many. See. How are you with uh, temporal mechanics? Uh, those I have not touched. Hmm. I, I have a side project I work on every once in a while. I like time to not have to go wibbly wobbly. Wibbly wobbly timey wimey. <laughs> and when it happens to you... More than once, you find a fascination with it. Makes sense. I had some downtime, and suddenly a Borg sh cube flew through our ship, and I became uh, fascinated with the concept of temple mechanics. The Borg would do that. Mm. That that would, especially with the Borg. No, how did a Borg? What? Like I said, Ensign, timey wimey, wibbly wobbly, all that good stuff. We can talk later. The, um, I can only imagine the stories. Your collective boots begin to vibrate ever so slightly as the warp core is powered on. Several consoles begin to bleep to life, and sev the bridge indicators flash multiple colors. And soon you are surrounded by a fairly familiar hum of, well, it's almost normalcy. Now, is that hum like... Yes. yes or... Is... <laughs> not do Star... Let's not do Star Trek uh, Lower Decks references here. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, Lieutenant Commander Boimler would be very disappointed. I know. No. Yeah, totally. Anyways. <clears throat> anyway. All right. Um, 
I will head to the center chair <laughs> and uh, kind of look around and <laughs> slowly sit down. <laughs> uh, as soon as your um, blue posterior touches the uh, uh, comfortable red seat, uh, Lieutenant Lagos pipes up. Uh, Captain, we're being hailed. The diplomats are ready to transfer on board. All right. Do we have quarters set for them? He has a bit of a confused face. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, we certainly do. As you see him frantically pushing buttons to uh, dispatch uh, crew services to prepare. <laughs> All right, um, I'll meet them down in the transporter room. Um, have uh, uh, Commander Hendricks, would you join me? I'm hoping you know where they're staying. <laughs> yes, I have the deck assignments set up for the representative, so we'll be good. Good. All right, let's go meet our guests. More kind of works up. Captain, may I join? Absolutely, Ensign. And all three wander out, leaving the only two bridge officers being Ensign Kathos, a black furred Cation, and Lieutenant Lagos, just sort of humming and hawing. Uh -huh. I was actually going to say Moose pops onto the bridge. Uh, I thought you were going to say Lagos pulls out a ball of twine. <laughs> okay. All right, so as y'all are heading to the turbo lift, it opens, and... Out comes Moose. Captain? Commander? <laughs> Ice Man? <laughs> Captain? Commander? Sir. Good evening. Do Doctor? No, Doctor? Doctor? No doubt you already saw the displays, but the warp car is now online, and he's just going to walk over to one of the little consoles on the side there. Betty, transfer engineering controls to console A1. Transferring in progress. Transfer. Sit down. Moose, we are going to meet the diplomats. You have the bridge. Very well. And you just go get back up and you'll just go sit down in the chair. Yeah, and go Lagos, ahead. And Lagos <laughs> looks defeated as he's no longer in charge. <laughs> I, I will say, Moose, uh, compared to Lagos, uh, Moose is bigger. I yeah, but that. Lagos brags more. Absolutely. <laughs> He does a lot of CrossFit. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Oh, back down to the transporter room. Uh, the three of you. Where is uh, Moors? I'll walk in, and you look at uh, T the transporter chief uh, Tegan, who I believe is a pro Zindi. Primate? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Cool. <clears throat> and the diplomats beam aboard. All in all, six uh, six beam on board, um, most of which are, uh, they're mostly human, one Vulcan, uh, one Tellarite, surprising enough. The rest are hu rest are pure human, except for these two. <laughs> <laughs> Who are... <laughs> Wearing us. Oh, God. Uh, uh, Deanna Troy, uh, currently rankless, holding a position within the uh, diplomatic corps, uh, acts as her focus is the remote Starbase Initiative um, outreach to newly discovered uh, civilizations. And her husband, slash, your boss, uh, the captain's boss's boss, Admiral William T. Riker. Currently not in uniform, just in civvies. Uh, he's carrying a, a plastic case that is roughly uh, f seven feet long and about one foot tall, not and mostly cylindrical. A small duffel bag over each of their shoulders. Well, Greetings, Admiral. <laughs> Counselor. <laughs> she smiles. Now there's a title I haven't heard in a very long time. Please, she smiles very warmly. Call me Deanna. Deanna. Yes. Admiral, it's good to see you again. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, he's, he smiles almost as warmly as Deanna, but that's... <laughs> But his eyes still... Have, you can't help but feel that he has a bit of a poker face going on. Uh, Admiral Riker's poker face is quite legendary among, well, anyone who's played him or has heard of people who have played him. It's really <laughs> six degrees of Commander William T. Riker at this point. <laughs> I, uh, uh, I would say around this time, Captain, you get a little blip on your communicator. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Captain, this is Dr. Ferliza. Um... Have our diplomatic guests arrived yet? Yes, Doctor. I'm greeting them now. Oh, um, be right there, and he's gonna leave Med Bay to like. Bolt. He does. He like sprints to the transporter room. Fair enough. <laughs> the commander just puts a big old grin on his face because he can only imagine what's about to happen. Uh, Admiral Riker um, shakes. Uh, each of your hands in turn, including Ensign Moore's, and takes the, sp <coughs> takes the time to step over and shake uh, Taken's hand. Uh, Captain, ba Captain Bashir, I hope you forgive that we didn't do the whole pomp and circumstance thing. Uh, your Admiral Zier is currently dealing with Deep Space 16, and his he sort of grimaces ever so slightly, and is unable to greet you personally. However, since my wife is... Heading out to Deep Space 15 to deal with this whole Remnant Alliance snafu, I figured a change of pace, a change of scenery would be in order. Understandable. Have you heard anything else about uh, um, my former captain? Oh, uh, not since he decided to join the civilian life. Uh, he's put in several requests that he be left alone, and we choose to respect that. Understandable. Well, it's an honor to see you again. I thank you for this opportunity. I can't wait to get back out to the Expanse. Well, that's one of the reasons I chose you for this assignment, Captain. Okay. Your previous experience, albeit under a shadier mandate, is precisely the experience we need. And okay. the turbo lifts open, everyone looks up, and Junit Ferliza. Do me a favor. Uh, roll me a daring plus fitness test. No, oh, sorry. No. Roll me a fitness. Roll yes. me a fitness plus security test. Uh, difficulty of one. Oh, okay. Uh, have, even the security is terrible. Yeah, if you have like uh, physical training or. Um, <laughs> Pratt falls. <laughs> I'm just imagining him running right into the door as it tries to open him. See, that's what I'm going to do. I'll perfectly describe how or that happens. Or the doors open and he slides in. Uh, <laughs> Boom, right into the replicator on the other side of the room. I do not have a focus. Either way, you got oh, two geez. momentum. So you, or two successes, one more momentum. Uh, so that's two. Uh, uh, Junet, uh, you have the sense of you, the sense of decorum to stop just before the door uh, motion sensors, straighten your tunic, and walk yeah. in. That's the stereotypical, like, they pull it from the bottom to straighten it yeah. out. Yep, the Picard, the other Picard maneuver. Yeah. <laughs> and as the doors open, you can see that uh, for Liz is just a little bit out of breath. <laughs> mm. Admiral Riker. He looks you up and ah yes, uh, Miss Kim, Lut ah sorry my GM hubbub ah, Doctor Ferliza. it's a pleasure. I must say I haven't seen you since. What's it been? Fifteen years? Uh, it's getting pretty close to that. Yeah, if we're talking twenty three ninety three, it's close to there. Yep, that's. Oh, if I recall correctly, you still owe me tw uh, two strips of gold press latinum for that Texas Hold'em game. And you know what? Actually, I have that right here. And he'll reach into one of his uniform pockets and pulls out. Uh. Three uh, strips of gold press latinum presses into his hand. Uh, consider the third interest for my late payment. You spent time with Quark, haven't you? He says as he doesn't refuse it and he pockets it in one of his pockets. <laughs> uh, I've spoken some with him. <sighs> uh, Counselor Troy. Why is it with people calling me Counselor all of a sudden? Deanna is fine, dear. My, 
my apologies, ma'am. And he sort of bows a bit. Uh, now, the rest of the diplomats are looking a little uh, confused at this, but uh, Deanna just quickly <coughs> looks around. Now, makes eye contact with the commander. Now, we have a... Thankfully, our long journey is going to be cut fairly short with the Graviton catapult. I must say it's my first time going through one. I've heard it's fairly uh, straightforward. <clears throat> of course, once you've gone through Transwarp with Picard... Uh, nothing beats that. Anyways, please, uh, <laughs> our our guests would like to see their room. Would uh, like to see their quarters and p prepare ourselves for the upcoming negotiations. Absolutely. Commander? Admiral? Deanna? Everyone else? Come this way. And they will shunt, they will show themselves out, um, Admiral Riker sort of daughters at the back for a few seconds, letting everyone go first. At first, out of prive, out of uh, politeness. And then, just as the doors close, uh, he just turns around. Oh, Captain, um, shuttle. I believe it is the Esquimalt shall be docking shortly. Please ensure that its contents are brought to are brought to your ah, are brought to your conference room. They're piping hot, and it's best to be served warm. Absolutely, Admiral. And with that... And, oh, he'll... For Lizzo wants to ask yep. a question of the Admiral. Of uh, course. May I ask a question of you, Admiral? Of course, Doctor. I've been hearing rumors that you're supposed to be putting on a uh, solo trombone concert in Deep Space 15. Is that true? He lifts up his... He lifts up the uh, plastic carrying case, pats it. You don't think I'd travel without this? Without the intention of putting on a performance? <laughs> Excellent. Uh, well, don't let me keep you, Admiral. And he'll step yes. aside. Yes. I've Apparently, the best act... Uh, according to rumor, everyone speaks high, highly of Sotak the Wrapping Vulcan. Uh, someone's going to have to put the... Someone's going to have to do better than that. And with that, he turns around and walks out the door, where his wife has been waiting for for him. They smoothly interlink arms and head down the corridor, laughing at some inside joke. Moore just has a puzzled look on his face. <laughs> I look at you the same way. I <laughs> just, um, okay. All um, right. I must admit, I'm quite excited for that performance. I don't Maybe know if we I... ask nicely, he'll uh, do a little something here for us. I'm very curious of this rapping Vulcan. Me too. I didn't know that was a possibility. <laughs> I didn't know either until today. I might well... have to do research on that. Hmm. If the GM has to write a Vulcan rap, oh God help you all. <laughs> <laughs> oh god oh boy guys i i'm i'm personally picturing the giant metal gold uh necklace with the hand sign on the... <laughs> as we step out of the transporter room more we'll just look to the captain captain i'm gonna go to astrometrics and make sure everything's aligned there with us going to new areas, we have to make sure that the lab is perfect. Absolutely, Ensign. <laughs> okay. Doctor, are are you good? Oh yes, um it's just been a while since I've seen the Admiral. Um served with him for a couple of years on the Enterprise E. Uh, he's a Actually... good man. By 2393, uh, he was on the Titan. The and, Titan. Yeah. Oh, okay. You've gotcha. probably you've probably seen probably him, just, but not. I probably just met him through Riker, not Riker, through Picard. Yeah. Probably. Various reunion episodes. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Captain. Uh, I will head to the bridge. Okay. So the captain, Captain, makes his way back to the bridge. 
Where are these folks? Reinhardt, yep, you're... I'll... Yep, I'll stand up and move back to my station. <laughs> Thank you, Moose. Okay. No problem. All right, so there should be a checklist uh, called Shakedown Cruise in the handouts. Uh, unless there's anything pre-launch you guys want to do, you can begin doing that. How uh, how soon is that uh, shuttle docking? <laughs> uh, the shuttle docks just as you reach the bridge. The shuttle okay. Esquimalt has docked and its cargo is being unloaded per the Admiral's uh, ex written directions. Works for me. All right. Uh, so, do we have any more br- I was going to say, where's the rest of the bridge crew? Well, your science officer's down oh, there. Uh, there. Yeah, GM astrometrics really, yeah. and... Jim really hasn't made an ops-type character. So, I mean, you could run it, it with a is con. My, is my, uh, is my, is the cat the, uh, con yes. officer? Yes, the Cation okay. is, your, is your, uh, technically shuttle bay operations, but in a pinch, she can also fly the ship. Okay, good to know. All right, Ensign? Yes, Captain. As I say, basically, uh, I, I will make an announcement to all ships. Uh, it's like, well, we are leaving space dock. Everybody, let's head out. Okay. And... Ensign, impulse drive, out of space dock. Okay, so if someone wants to pick up uh, Lieutenant or Cathos's con sheet, because every Helma, because every <coughs> every Star Trek show needs to have a scene of the ship leaving space dock. Right. Yep. Um, I'm going to spend a couple more threat because it's funny. Um, <laughs> This will be a control plus con. Uh, the ship can assist with engines plus con. And I will spend my threat to increase the difficulty to 2 and increase threat range uh, 90 to 20. Is the ship assisting? Yes, the ship is assisting. Uh, engines plus con. Up. Gotcha. As the low brass begins to swell and the dramatic music begins to play. The camera pans for 20 minutes on every ounce, every inch of the ship. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that is two successes. Nope, that's uh, someone rolled for Lisa. Uh, who has Kathos? I'll grab Kathos. All right. <clears throat> the Concordia ain't helping. Nope. Concordia still needs a bit of work there, Moose. But she didn't fail so yeah. <laughs> and if and you I... want we do have two momentum whoever well, I would is say... keeping track of that <laughs> I would say helm operations would be a focus in this concept mm -hmm. it yeah. would indeed so that's only one success uh, so scrape the pain yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're pulling uh... a galaxy quest <laughs> <laughs> As you uh, launch out of the ship, everything seems to be going perfectly fine. Uh, the, the iner you feel the inertial dampeners take over as you are kept uh, uh, as it arrests the vertical momentum on your individual bodies. And everything works perfectly fine until there is a loud scraping sound that reverberates through the hull as the weapons module scrapes along the top of the dry dock. <laughs> Uh, Kath if Kathos could become embarrassed, she probably would be. Or if she could blush, she would be. No, her her hair just stands up on end. Yeah. yeah. Moose just looks over like, Are you ready to be our con officer? Yeah. <laughs> I am, sir. Sorry, sir. You have any engineering talents? Um, she does not know. Oh, he's asking that in character. Oh, oh well, my bad. <laughs> Sorry. No. Uh, just shuttlecraft uh, maintenance, sir. Oh, good, good. Well, you're going to be using a shuttlecraft to reapply the paint. 
to that area you just scratched. Yes, sir. Someone might be spending a little bit of activation time in the uh, holodeck training program. <laughs> I know a good one. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> All right, Ensign, can you uh, take us warp five to Pluto? Sir, engaging warp in a planetary system, especially one as crowded as this, is not recommended. I didn't say that it was. <laughs> oh, you're, you're testing to see if I can speak up in knowledge of uh, Starfleet navigation protocols. Yes, sir. Um... I want to see what this baby can do. <laughs> <laughs> Whiz past Pluto and go further. <laughs> okay, so you're engaging warp while in the Sol system, a.k.a. one of the most heavily traveled <laughs> systems in uh, Federation space. Is there a few <laughs> meteor, like our asteroid belts in our system uh, before there's... we get to Pluto? I mean, there is the asteroid belt, but contrary to popular belief, they're not, you know, neck and neck, or as close together as... Plus, you know, centuries of mining has thinned them out quite heavily. But yes, that's definitely what one would call a navigation hazard. Okay, okay. <laughs> we still have to warp out to, to uh, Talar. It'll be fine. <laughs> Take us to the Pluto marker. Very well. Yes, sir. Setting course for the Pluto Memorial. Oh. And... Wait, memorial? Oh, why, yes. why is it a memorial, Lenson? Uh, well, sir, um, because, uh, GM Lore Dump. Uh, approximately two years before the massive Borg invasion, a Borg cube somehow broke programming, evolved, and literally ate Pluto. Oh. Oh! Yeah, that was a story that was kind of out there, but at the same time, I'm sort of following the book canon, and that was part of book canon. So, yeah, Pluto and Charon are no more. You heard it here first, folks. Pluto is officially not a planet. <laughs> yeah, we can end that debate finally. It just no longer yes. exists. <laughs> Moose just looks at the con office like, oh, wow, I, I just got up to the Pike era. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's something to look forward to, I guess. Yeah. Lieutenant, the 25th century is full of surprises. Lieutenant Commander, sir. It's definitely interesting. I would have expected it to be. An hour later, the USS Concordia arrives at the exterior of the Pluto Memorial, a large holographic projector half the size of Charon, uh, broadcasting a series of holographic symbols of the United Federation of Planets, Starfleet, and several other smaller alliances that were affected during that particular invasion. She be now, is this, is this uh, <coughs> fairly unpopulated? It is uh, it is a fairly sparsely populated thing. It's more of a, uh, I hate to use the word tourist trap at this stage. Uh, it's been in operation for about 10 years. So, yeah, ships will come, ships will go, but it's definitely not as densely populated as the original because this is where Pluto was, maintaining its precise orbit and velocity. So you're on the far extent, uh, the far um, extreme. Extreme, thank you. The extreme range of the Sol system. Okay, that's what I was going to say. I, before I want to do uh, some of these other tests, I uh, kind of would like to uh, get farther away. You know? Oh yes. <laughs> yeah. Out to. The how to make make. <laughs> All right, and I will calm the ensign. Ensign Moore, can you uh, perform a sensors test for us? Yes, sir. Coming. As he's coming it right out of the turbo lift. Okay. Um. So this will be uh, sensor or blah. 
insight plus science from Ensign Moore. The ship can assist with sensors plus science. And this is just going to be a difficulty of zero. <clears throat> and by this point, uh, Commander Hadrix, you have settled all your uh, charges. And where would you would you like to be back on the bridge? Sure, why not? All right. I want to use my cautious science, so I'm going to buy a third die. Okay. Because why not? Why not? Uh, sensor operations. Sensor operations is definitely a focus. And Holy. that is far too many successes. Uh, that's We're five. At max momentum. That's yeah. that's because of my helping his sensors. Yeah. <laughs> that, that that was the yeah, advantage. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Talazin will just look up and start like rambling off the exact amount of gases that are in the area. Um, sir, I'm pretty sure the sensors are pretty calibrated. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good to know. Next, I want to, uh, Commander, I'd like to test saucer separation. Oh, I've been looking forward to this. <laughs> it's all yours. Well, I'll let you stay here. I will... Okay, out of character, This we would have what we would consider a battle bridge for the saucer sep, right? Yes, there would be a battle bridge, auxiliary bridge. Yes. Set piece pending, but yes. Mm. Okay. Um, Lieutenant Lagos, could you accompany me to the auxiliary bridge? I'll take the con on that one. So, and I'll go down with Lieutenant Lagos to the auxiliary bridge for the saucer sep. Okay. Lagos will follow you. I don't actually have a set piece for the battle bridge yet. I will make that a note for my... to figure out. So... Okay, uh, so the saucer separation, I believe it's spelled out in the talent, <clears throat> but, uh, so either the helm officer on the main bridge or the helm officer on the separator bridge has to make the first check, which is going to be a control plus con. Uh, this is, this is a control con task with a difficulty of three. And the ship will assist with structure plus engineering. So oh, it sounds like uh, Commander Hadrix actually wants to run this himself. So, hell yeah, I do. All <laughs> right, I figured you would. All right, the ship's ready to go. All right, Hadrix got two, and the ship got one. Okay, so that is the three successes you need. There's a small lurch under everyone's f under ah under everyone's feet as the saucer disengages from all of its clamps and uh, what is one inch of space between it and the engineering section becomes two becomes a foot becomes a meter becomes 10 50 100 etc more will be reading this out as we separate <laughs> Good job, Commander. Let's reintegrate. Well, hang on. Well, give me just one moment. And he, the <laughs> Commander is going to take the auxiliary section, and he's going to literally take it out a little bit, turn it right around towards the saucer, and just kind of wave. <laughs> More will speak up. Uh, sir, why don't we test the weapons in while we're saucer separated? <laughs> It, since the design of the ship is to be separated in case of emergency or to have two targets firing at something. You're not going to shoot at one another, are you? <laughs> That's not my intention! Mine, Not mine either, but I mean... Oh, quite out of character. Well, That's a good idea. Say, yeah. yep. In all honesty... 
technically, that's my next option is to test the weapons. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Just yep. not the torpedoes. Well, it's up to the captain yeah. to figure out how that's going to work. Moose, can you do yes, me a captain. favor and take phasers? Sure. Well, you know, Lago, I, I hope mean, you're good with the phasers. <laughs> Moore has a security of three, so he actually is decent. He just doesn't have a focus. I think Moose is pretty good on security too. So let's okay, have Moose have security four. Okay. Meanwhile, All right. I have to pull up Lagos' sheet. Shields okay. up. We're just testing phasers. <laughs> yes, Lower Captain. Power. Captain, if I have injuries on my med bay before we're even at Deep Space 15. I'm not going to be happy. <laughs> Captain, we also do have to test out the torpedo guidance systems. We might as well just do both. You just hear a heavy sigh as the communication cuts off. Okay, so... Lagos uh, got one. Lagos got one. I believe it's uh, difficulty two to hit something. However, someone can roll the... I don't have separate sheets up yet for the separated things, because I was... I don't know why I wasn't anticipating this, but, you know. Uh, so if someone can roll... <laughs> oh. Oh. That'll be fun. Let's, wor <laughs> let's worry about the star the uh, star drive section first, and then we'll get to uh, Moose's roll. Uh, so if okay. someone can roll the ship um, weapons security, please. Gotcha. And should have the ship roll twice because it's yeah. against itself. Yeah, well, that's one, and I'll roll it again, please. <clears throat> So the first one for the ship will be for um, uh, Lagos. Side, yeah. For yeah. yeah. Argos and then okay. one each. Right. One each. Okay, so there is a light smattering of phaser fire on each other's shields, testing both the shield emitters and the phaser arrays. Uh, so congratulations, both have successfully passed. Uh, let's see here. You can just take the threat for that complication. I don't know, though. I'm... I like the idea <laughs> of it burning out one of the admitters. Let's see. Uh, that's the macro I'm missing, the challenge dice one. I'll have to do that next one. Oh, good. Uh, there is... So, Moose, your engineering sensors are reporting that the... Disp that, that they have worked. However, the phaser... Or the... Uh, the couplings between the battle bridge to the weapons module don't have they seem to have overloaded so the weapons module itself is currently non-functional after that first attack we'll need a hmm. bit of repair time interesting oh, found some flaws okay. from the guys from the docks didn't install in some inverters right We'll get that worked out, Captain. I trust you're on it. Shall we try the torpedoes next? I'm a little concerned on that, but... Yeah, let's do it. What's the worst that can happen? Are you once again shooting each other with torpedoes now? Yeah. Okay, this game could end before oh, it starts. Okay. So, well, you wouldn't let me do warp five out of space, guy. We <laughs> might as well shoot each other. So, I mean, we're also uh, in the aura cloud, so there's debris everywhere. There's some somewhere. For Liza is screaming. <laughs> uh, uh, contrary, to, see, I've actually worked with scientists and stuff. The Oort cloud is often depicted as a you know dense thing, but there's still hundreds of thousands of meters between each particle or each object. So it's not like you're going to close your eyes, spin in 360, fire and hit something. So well, with the amount of debris around the uh holographic image of yeah. the thing that we might. Yeah, that's a thing. So okay, so this is going to be a difficulty 3 test once again uh for torpedo launches uh from both uh Lagos and more and because of the complication I am going to so not only does the weapons pod not so basically the complication is that while the weapons pod on the star drive section is not functional 
that means that the ship cannot assist in this attack. Oh, jeez. Dang it, uh, Moose, you screwed up my part. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I'll roll the one time just for the saucer section. And I'm going to spend the momentum, since we have six of them, yeah, for a third die. Right Alright. Oh yeah, complication wrong section. Oh, well, too late now. I will make note of that for future. Okay. One from the Concordia. And well, Lagos oh, got one from Lagos. Lagos did I'm going to spend two momentum to activate uh, the specific trait of the Concordia. Okay, I believe that's the point defense system. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. Daring security for torpedoes? Uh, control security. Okay. I did daring. Either It was the same number either way for me. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Cool. Bro. Awesome. Uh, roll Ooh. damage from a photon yes. torpedo, please. Uh, what is that? Uh, I believe it's on the... I think that's... So, I don't have the challenge dice macro loaded. That's my bad. Uh, just roll 6d... I think it's 66. Okay, so... Oh. Okay, so that is... Um, so Lagos or Moose rolled the 66. So no, so, I rolled it. Oh, oh he did. Yeah, okay. yeah, he did, and it's his fire. So yeah. Okay. What so is so, it? Lagos was the one that got it. Moose complicated. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm having Moose roll the damage. Oh, gotcha. Because y'all, yeah. Okay, so uh, Ensign Moore. So despite the failings on your side, uh, you're ma you are very sick. Uh, Hadrix and Moore sort of breathe a sigh of relief as you see the torpedo streaking away, targeting or following targeting sensors. Everything is great until the star drive section is rocked. Uh, that would be uh, six. I believe that is five. I don't believe any of those count as a breach. One plus. Uh... No, the four counts as a one plus effect. So that counts as two. Uh, let's see. Oh, so. I it's actually five dice. I should have rolled. Oh, uh, five. Okay. Quantum we'll, is six. Ah, we'll drop the last six then. Then we'll just count the first numbers. So that is five stress, and I believe that's two breaches oh, because geez. of the high yield. Of the hey, computer. hey! <laughs> Remember how I said we shouldn't do this? Yep. And once again, GM has not prepared his macros right. So, let's just roll. Let's dig the Terry's aboard the saucer. Yeah, uh, 2D 100. And, and an admiral. I believe Don't those forget, count as uh, structure hits. Uh, core rule book. Oh, this is perfect. This is I perfect, swear guys. Christ. Okay. <laughs> we killed someone. I will. I'll feel very bad if it was one of the players. If I have to fix Admiral Riker on my first day on this ship. Uh, let's see. System hit table. Oh, it should have only been D20s instead of D100s. Let's re-roll that. 2D. Hey, there was a broadcast, I assume, that went out to both ships that were doing this, so they're both prepared. So, in general, Captain. Structure. <laughs> we could have not had debris. We didn't have to shoot at each other. What's the fun in that? This is how historians test, bitches. So you know. <laughs> okay, Have so. Have to test the shields too. Can't just assume yeah. the shields will hold. Uh, so that would be a breach to the engines, and a breach to structure. <laughs> so we now roll one d six for the challenge dice. That's a one, which I believe counts as nothing happens. So congratulations. There's no injuries. So Ares is very proud of himself because he hit the things that he was supposed to hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the structure is breached and damaged. Which means we can't reconnect. That is also that is what I was just getting to. Um, so, um, congratulations, uh, Moose. Now you have to get back to Star Drive section to fix what the... Uh, well, you kind of broke. So, yeah. 
GM. You broke your own ship. GM.exe has crashed. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the star drive hit the saucer and damaged the reconnection coils. <laughs> well, guess what? We can now test the Tronton module. Yes? Yes! Yes, yes, we, can. yes we can. Okay. So, out of curiosity, how does the how are we doing the dry dock module? Uh, so... Is it basically the star drive is the dry dock? So, as I am currently envisioning it, is that deck twenty four of this ship is uh, serves no other function than in sort of a uh, extendable, or it can break open and several uh, docking clamps extend from it which the, you can then use as walking airlocks, dry dock modules, industrial replicator, etc. So mm. that, that is currently what Deck 24 is until you decide to use an arc milestone to get rid of this talent and replace it with something else. What? Never. Why would you use a hat? I don't know. Why would you? Anyways, uh, the ship currently has two breaches. Um, and at this point, we are going to cut to the bridge... Uh, Concordia Bridge up here. So the star drive took the. Uh, yeah. The, uh, yeah, okay. your weapons. So the weapons fired, but your the weapons guidance system was so bad they hit your ship. So that's how I'm ruling that f complication. Uh, you have a. Uh, Admiral William T. Riker <laughs> barges through the door. Uh, you can see him tugging on his Admiralty shirt and aligning his uh, Admiral pips. Captain, what the hell? We look. Captain, what is going on? The Lord. shakedown checklist, sir. You know. And uh, we had a little malfunction. <laughs> Everything's fine. Situation normal. <laughs> Not part of the <laughs> Um, Moose, um, can you get on that? We're <laughs> already on it. I got Bud looking into it. Thank you. Also, who did the uh, programming of the torpedo guidance system? Probably the one who was on the other side of the ship that just, or the other station, or the other, uh, uh, the star drive section that just got pummeled by his miscalculations. Uh, far be it for me to judge a book by its cover, but Lieutenant Lagos doesn't look like he's good at math. <laughs> oh. He's paid to be pretty. <laughs> you know, just look at the admiral for a second, like, hello. Ah, Lieutenant Commander? Admiral? And he steps aside and graciously motions that the turbo lift is currently yours. Yeah. <laughs> He'll just go in and head on down. Da, 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 da. I'm, I'm back. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, be thankful that your sick bay facilities were not needed. Uh, actually, no, they were needed. Several small injuries as a photon torpedo hit the star drive section. Welcome to Friday night on the Concordia. This is a shakedown. We gotta test everything. We gotta shake out and roll. Action. There was debris. <laughs> well, this is how the captain captains. So, you know, y'all. The captain. Can... The captain is sitting down with his antenna drooping, shaking his head. <laughs> <sighs> Uh, Commander Hadrix isn't here either. Um, nope. So yeah. it's basically okay. Riker, Kathos, and the captain. Yeah, uh, Ensign Kathos uh, spins mm -hmm. around and says, Captain, I'm putting the ship in station keeping. I don't believe we'll be going anywhere for a little while. <laughs> and then spins around again and just goes back to her work. Thank you, Ensign. Uh, what am I rolling to uh, <laughs> fix everything? Oh, boy. So... Uh, to repair a breach is one breach per day. Um, so what we can do is at least get the ship operational and moving again. So to bypass the damage of said breaches would be 
Control plus engineering. Uh, because you will be in the star drive section, which has main engineering, you'll get the advantage, lowering the difficulty. Uh, difficulty, I believe, is one per breach. I got a focus of jury again. Okay. And that's a focus, not a talent, right? Focus, yeah. Okay. Because those are very different things. Cool. Yes. Do, do, do. Okay. So that is three successes for the first one. Uh, you are able to bypass the damage made to the engines. So you are at least able to once again go to warp. Uh, your top speed has been decreased from 9.8 to 9.0. So that is what it is for now. Okay. Yeah. And if you could do me another one, please. Oh, sir, your, your delivery came in. <laughs> he rolls his eyes and steps into the conference room. Ooh, nothing there. Okay, uh, nothing there. So the breach is going to be a still a thing for the struck for the uh, for the star drive section, preventing uh, the reintegration of the ship. But at least you can move again. So you know, that's a thing. Does the saucer section have uh, independent warp core? You know, I don't. Th I am not one hundred percent certain on that at the moment. I am treating it as no. I will have to invest. It would be probably something that should be a thing, and it will well, probably I... be retconned into being a thing. But at the moment, I'm saying no. Okay. Yeah, I it's, think it's I want to take day. before we head to uh, Cerberus. I think I want the whole ship to go with us. <laughs> I, I don't want to leave part of it or clamp onto it and go to warp. <laughs> Are they going to come tug us back to Mars? <laughs> uh, I mean, I think that will be... Uh, with an Admiral on board, yeah. Would yeah. that be more logical for us to do at this point? Because since we're... Yep. a couple hours away and we yeah. can get everything repaired because <laughs> instead of us taking days out <laughs> here in the middle of nowhere uh, well at this <laughs> beautiful <laughs> monument uh yeah let's head back to mars and... all right uh, <laughs> i mean really we could fly ourselves at impulse back. oh yeah we each have impulse. an impulse drive oh yeah yeah, yeah. So the two of uh, the two parts of the ship make it back to uh, the Utopia Planitia, and y'all slide back into the docking bay as if you had, or the dry dock as if you all had never left. Oh no, no, because we have two parts now. We were one ship when we left, and now we're two. Uh, <laughs> just, just, just remember that. <laughs> I leave a pad uh, for Lagos when he gets back to the saucer uh, part of the bridge. Uh, how to recalibrate your torpedoes 101. <laughs> yes! Yes! Moore just looks at it over, like, underneath Lagos's arm. Uh, I'll help you with that. <laughs> uh, and the... Written by Lieutenant Commander Garrus. Calibration. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so... Uh, the next day, everything is repaired. Everything is ready to go again. And the uncomfortableness that has been around, that has followed uh, Commander, or sorry, not Commander, Admiral Riker and his wife were, uh, have lifted. Sadly, uh, pizza night is, was postponed for 24 hours. While, <laughs> so the pizza is has been had to be reheated. Oh, now, oh that's for me. It has been brick. It it has been reheated in an op ah in an uh, in an open power module. So it's at least it's more like a baked kind of reheating instead of you know microwave reheating. So it's not as bad as it could be, but the pizza is still very delicious. The my question is, is the topping bunny corn? I wasn't intending Hawaiian. for it to be. 
I was intending it to be a Verkuvian ham with a slight dash of slaw. That works. <laughs> <sighs> and... Go in my ready room and cry <laughs> as we're being talked out. <laughs> the the can you hear opening was him opening a can of beer to just <laughs> nice yeah so 24 hours later uh you find yourselves in one piece with weapons fully operational and sensors fully calibrated at the pluto memorial once again admiral Riker is taking a little bit more of an let's say active interest in the shakedown cruise now He's trying his best to stay out of your way, but the fact that he has uh, taken up a position at one of the other auxiliary consoles just, you know, all right. Uh, Everybody positions. Ensign, take us to warp. Yes, sir. Tell our prime. Finally, executing jump to tell our prime. I like the fact that she's a sassy cat. I think I'm keeping this. Uh, where did Moore's character go? Moore fell into a plot hole. There's Moore. Uh, Moose, are you going to be on bridge or down in engineering? Or elsewhere. Uh, he'll be on bridge. Okay. Uh, for Lisa? Um. Keep Riker's attention. <laughs> be on bridge. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm not sure where Deanna would be, but he'd probably be talking with Deanna somewhere. Okay, probably down at the lounge. All right. Fair enough. Have we named the lounge yet? <laughs> yeah, you haven't named it yet. So you know, give that time. I'm sure a name I'm will come to you. I think the rabbit Where it is and what it might be it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Uh, and the ship jumps to warp. It's going to be roughly a eight hour uh, jump at maximum warp to Teller Prime. Is there any scenes or anything folks would like to do in the meantime? Yeah, I'd like to have my meeting <laughs> with oh. everyone in the conference room. Okay, the more... Of Conference room, senior staff meeting. We can do this. Conference room. Putting people here. Uh, is there anyone other than the player characters that you wish to have present? Uh, Lagos would be there for... Oh yeah, tactical. Uh, tactical. And then we will have... Lieutenant Logos. The room still smells faintly of uh, pizza. Uh, cheese, uh, cheese, tomato sauce, all the delightful uh, flavors that were enjoyed earlier today are still lingering in the air. So, that went well. <laughs> Over at the end of the table, Lagos is apologizing profusely. <laughs> oh, uh, sorry. Uh, this is a scene change, so lose one momentum. Well, at least we're starting to work out some of the kinks in the system, Captain. I agree. Um, a, shooting on ourselves was probably not the best idea, especially with functioning torpedoes. High yield and, at that. And one of the most well-known admirals in Starfleet history on board. I actually think the test went rather well, considering the shields held. That is also true. That is a good point. Yeah. Good, good, good point. But yes, uh, we do not look good to start off this <laughs> shakedown cruise. So... We have to at least as long as the Admiral's here until we get to Cerebra Station to try to do better. Yeah, I'm not going to be lying. It's one of my best shakedown crews I've been a part of. Really? Good to yeah. know. 
Try fighting with an Andorian shield array while you're also mixing in the Vulcan grav plating. That's a pain. Yeah, I have seen worse. <clears throat> oh, all right. Anyone got any report yet on their departments? Um, my little department seems to be going well. Um, had to treat some fairly minor injuries from the uh, weapons testing, but... Well, from now on, just call it the incident. <laughs> you assume there's only going to be one. <laughs> the first... Incident. <laughs> All right, good. No, 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 no serious injuries. Just bruises, scrapes, things like that. I believe some of the more major injuries were to pride and such, but sure, yeah, sure. everyone that I looked at was fine. Well, engineering's so, fine for most part. We've had to remove some self-soon stem bolts that are used by uh, junior builders as a shortcut to the construction of the vessel. So we're pulling those out right now, actually. Clamps are back to working order? Well, I'd rather have the clamps that can be sealed and unsealed instead of just permanently sealed. And we found a couple of them actually used in the saucer separation nodes. That's bad. Other than that, Captain, everything so far seems to be working out well. Crew morale is good, even considering the incident. I think the factor of having the Admiral around kind of gives some people a little more of a pep in them, their step and kind of keeps them not necessarily on edge, but kind of proud to be leading off this cruise. I like to hear that. Thank you. I said maybe You're when welcome. we get to maybe when we get to service we can uh, do something nice before we send off. <laughs> Would be nice. It's but be my first time out that far. I have a feeling this is going to be a very different experience for all of us. I think it you're right. Certainly will. <laughs> be a new one for me. Lieutenant, uh, uh, Lieutenant Legos looks across at Rein, at uh, Reinhardt. Uh, sir, if you don't mind my saying so, sir, you're holding this, you know, man in the past stuck in the present thing kind of well. Yeah. It's a nice little fun thing to have, I guess. Well, we certainly, uh, tweak some of the Vulcans when I tell them I'm older than them. Be interesting to see a Vulcan scowl. Oh, it's hilarious. I've seen that. It's not as much a scowl as kind of their closest approximation to grumpy, I would say. Well, they squint their eyes just ever so slightly, but they still raise their eyebrow just a smidge. And it's just that little... A little raise just goes, are you kidding me? That's that's the expression they that, that portrays. Well, they would never admit it. Yeah, I grew up in the world of diplomats. Vulcan diplomats are just straight-faced. You gotta watch the ears. That's <laughs> how you can tell. Overall, Captain, I think the ship is doing pretty well, considering everything, and the shakedown seems to be going pretty well for all of us. I agree. Anybody have anything else? Hmm. No, not really. All right. <laughs> Everyone dismiss. Uh, Commander, I would like a word with you. You bet, Captain. Uh. Alright, the rest file out. 
leaving <laughs> Mr. Leaving Commander Hadrix with Captain Bashir. Yeah. So I think more mostly my pride was hurt more than that, uh, especially with the Admiral on board. Um, I have a special task for you. Um, yes, sir. What I is would it? Like, I would like to christen our uh, lounge. And I have experience with a ancient Terran tradition of Kiroki. Uh, some of the best that we pulled up was some of the original Klingon Alvis songs. Um, no, no. <laughs> but something a little lighthearted when we get to the station. Okay, sir. I think I can help accommodate that. I mean, it will definitely be an interesting morale boost. <laughs> and I think I've heard of karaoke before. It worked well on the Nighthawk. Uh, so I have some files and records in my uh, personal belongings I can pass on to you. Um, I think it would go well with the uh, the lounge. And uh, I think we need to come up with a name for it. Something the crew will enjoy. That sounds like a good idea. Uh, maybe I'll put together some Mechigan to um, have while we're there. Good. That sounds great. Um, that's really about it. Uh, do you have anything for me? Not, nothing at this time, Captain, but I will let you know. Absolutely. Thank you so far, Commander, for everything. Of course, Captain. I'm looking very forward to this journey together. All right. Dismissed her? Dismissed. Thank you. Not long after, the starship... The USS Concordia arrives on the orbit of Taylor Prime. <clears throat> Taylor Prime, being sort of in the backwater of Federation space, well, as backwater as one can get for being a founding species, I suppose, uh, Taylor Prime's most notable contribution to the uh, exploration of the galaxy beyond its stout-hearted in and uh, passionate individuals, uh, their... Uh, uh, engineering designs and their love and their um, fantastic beauty of their pristine planet is in the orbit uh, there is a series of graviton catapults uh, that have been crea that have been created to reach out to several of the graviton catapults located near the deep space station ah, the deep space station facilities located in the depths of alpha beta gamma delta quadrant And my bloody fourth wife still lives there. <laughs> <laughs> the USS Concordia appears in orbit and is quickly hailed by the surface. Or by a station, I should say, that all the facilities ring around. On this, screen. This is... Uh, this is... Uh, ah, blah, blah, blah. Mm, sorry, Michael. Michael not getting his Tellarite accent right. Lieutenant Draxus of the backwater, that is our home world. Welcome, USS Concordia. You're a day late. What happened? You lose, did you lose warp cohesion and find yourself in a temporal time loop? I hear that happens all the time to Starfleet ships. Uh, well, you no beard scruffy fool. We can get here when we want because we're Starfleet. I'm sorry, you blue, you blue-skinned antenna-less whelp. Did you just insult me? And then he breaks out into the widest grin possible. I didn't think you had it in you. Starfleet officers are so scared to engage Tellarite in proper diplomacy. Now, which of these uh, lovely gates are you sending that hunk of scrap through? Well, probably that piece of crap over there. We need to go to Deep Space 15. 
Uh. If you don't have the time for it. Uh, beta 3. Yep. Uh, please. You're going to need to wait for a half hour. We're expecting a shipment from the far side. We need to make sure everything's cleared. Once they've come through, get your ship's impulse engines in gear. Get her, uh, get her wide ass in line and hang on. Ten four, you scruffy bastard. I appreciate it, and I'll talk to you sooner than later. <sighs> End com. And so ends Tellerite Diplomacy 101. <laughs> More will just pipe up. Pipe up. Tellerites never cease to amaze me. Somewhere down in engineering, someone swears that they just heard their fourth wife. <laughs> <laughs> it is canon. Be All Tellerites always have a fourth wife. Yep. <laughs> Uh, uh, true to their timeline. Dude, sorry, did I miss a pun? No, oh, I just said, I, we're not going on planet, are we? Uh, true to their uh, scheduling. Say what you will about Tellerites when they say, when they give you a time frame, you better believe that time frame's accurate. Uh, half hour on the nose, a large freighter um, appears out of the Graviton catapult. And sets its way course towards Vulcan. Uh, your the uh, Ensign Cathos's console lines up with a rather, um, well, it's a PG-rated series of instructions, p telling them precisely where to go. Stick it. Yeah. Yeah, you can take that ship and stick it. All right. All right. Well, head in. We go. And it has just occurred to me that the Beta 3, I forgot to move that over. Okay. So, let's take a quick bio break while the GM uh, hastily covers up the mistake he's made. Uh, so, let's be back in 10-ish minutes. So, be back at 5 to the hour, please. Okay. Check. All right. I shall see you guys okay. shortly. And we are back, and where the hell did my overlay go? No! Um, what the... Um, okay, that's a thing. Let's... Oh. <laughs> oh, my. Um, hey, hey, McCall, you still spelled Shizno's name wrong. Oh, fuck. <laughs> you, you, if you just swap G the N and the Z, you're fine. GM.exe has crashed. Okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, it kind of did. Four. We've lost everything. <laughs> Uh, I might as well just be called Praetor sh sh There we go. <laughs> Everything is back. Everything is normal. Pay no attention to that. I will fix Shizno's name for next session. I apologize. Okay. <laughs> so. Come here, Picard. Mm -hmm. So, you, for, uh, as you come to a full stop and power off your impulse engines and warp core as, no, as uh, instructed, there's a momentary pause where you're trying, where you're just waiting to see what happens. And it's sort of, you know that feeling in your gut when you're, when you drop fast? Uh, picture that except he oh. forward motion. Oh. Very, <laughs> very briefly. Um, it lasts for less than a second. Um, and anyone looking outside the window will notice a brief, a brief, um, black background with um, not stars trailing but more multicolors uh, sort of like traveling th through a wormhole but it only lasts for about five seconds and you will find yourself at the beta 3 catapult facility on the other side <clears throat> out of curiosity just because I like time things how long did that take uh that takes roughly f um grand total about a minute travel one way or the other nice okay yeah. cool. graviton catapult the way to go <laughs> works so, it works so much better if there's a stationary uh facility to catch you at the end otherwise it might be a little longer and more uncontrolled. 
Then we would just pull a Voyager. Yeah. No, we would be lost in yes. space. Lost in space. Uh, you are... Res uh, Lieutenant Lagos uh, pipes up from con. Sir, we're being hailed. On screen? On screen is a uh, middle-aged uh, human male experiencing what is probably male pattern baldness. But he's trying his best to ensure that it that the that most people don't notice it as such. As face such, comb over? Yeah. Please, oh, I was about to say, I was like, please tell me he has a comb over. Yes, he has a comb over. <laughs> Hell yes. <laughs> face comb over or toupee, one or the other. USS Concordia. This is Beta this is uh, Commander Damien Moore of the Beta Three Catapult facility. Welcome to the Lasai Expanse, sirs. Thank you. I must say, I, it's, it, I'm very pleased to, that uh, the rumors are true and we're having f further Starfleet assistance out here. The Vitars have not shown much interest in this facility, but being closer to them than Starbase uh, Deep Space 15 is a little unnerved. Uh, thankfully, the... My, our shipment of uh, phaser turrets has arrived and will be deployed by the end of the week. Good to hear. Have you been having problems with the Vitars? Well, sir, ever since they ho they started the whole Civil War thing, well, we, we're one big, juicy uh, technological target here, sir. Uh, our weapons systems, scanning systems, and armor is much better than anything that they have. At least they've demonstrated they haven't made any overtures, sir, but I prefer to be cautious. To know. There's an awkward pause. Uh, uh, All anyway, right. Anyway, <laughs> sir. Uh, yes, well, um, enjoy your time here. I hope to see you again soon. I'm sure you'll want to go to Deep Space 15, which is a far more interesting facility than ours here. Well, keep up the good job keeping the catapult safe yes sir that's our job and uh, we do it well <laughs> end call <laughs> <laughs> he seems lonely <laughs> there's a quick just uh, a quick scan of the station indicates only 50 life signs on board so yeah <laughs> all right Head us to Deep Space 15. Oh, uh, Deep Space 15 is about a two-hour jump at max warp. But, of course, you first of all have to deal with the Carceri Nebula, a wound in space. Uh, all sorts of uh, horrendous elements all coming toward together in a massive red smear that stretches across the... Um, it stretches across the vision, uh, across the view stream. <coughs> now Moore looks at it like, uh, big glowing eyes, like things to study. Yes. <laughs> things to study. So is there a safe passage now through yeah, it? There is still a safe, uh, the safe passage <laughs> is still there. You are. It will be another yep. uh, and contest to get through, but yes, the port, the entrance is still there. All we right. We have to go like out and around from. We can't just go from the catapult into the nebula. Oh no, uh, the catapult is a decent distance away from the nebula, because last time, the. They tried placing the catapult on the far side of the nebula, and then weird shit started happening. So they hmm. moved the whole facility to the uh, Federation side of the nebula and placed it a good distance away just to make sure that this doesn't happen. It's almost like it's closer to Ebon. Pretty close. It's about um, the, it's on the map, but it's about equidistant between Ebon and the Vitars. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, I thought I had a 
picture of it. I do not. I don't know why. I will figure that out later. My bad. GM is not. I've had two and a half months to prepare. I didn't. Anyways. <laughs> It's I mean, right. the, yeah. there's a picture in the, in the docs. Yeah. But those on the lovely stream can't see it, but they will see it next session. Anyways, the poor... They will. Yeah, they will. They will. All right. Set course. Okay. So, into the interior of the Carceri Nebula, uh, several vicious gases swirl about in what has been learned to be a... It's not so much an artificially maintained structure, it's a, it's more of a gap in a defense structure rather than anything else. As re we recall, the nebula has been artificially created and maintained by a ancient race known as the Salak to keep something inside. Naturally, things failed. Um, Cerberus crew felt like badasses defeating it and giving a swift middle finger to the laws of reality. It was fantastic. It was pretty good. I liked it. Anyways, uh, sadly, however, Ensign, you... Uh, as I say, Ensign, as we're going through, uh, you're more than welcome to take Sample. <laughs> <laughs> okay. As he's running to the science things, like, running all the scans. I can't imagine him fangirl squealing. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, uh, I need the con officer to make me a control plus con, and uh, the ship can assist with um, structure in this case plus engineering. Am I helping with that? Sorry. Um, if some, yeah, if someone can assist with the, by rolling the ship, the ship will assist with structure engineering. Who's doing sure. the con officer? I can do it if. Oh, oh, sorry. I'll take the cotton off, sir. And who's doing the ship? Uh, if you want to, Shizno. If not, I have it up. Yeah, go ahead. You already got it up. All right, McCall, what's my role again? Uh, this is going to be... So, ship... Or, no. Nah, let me start from scratch. Uh, control con for the pilot. Structure engineering for the ship. This is going to be a difficulty of two. Would you like a momentum? Mm, no. How about helm operations? Helm operations works. That momentum is not needed. That is five oh, successes, yes. so three momentum. Okay, we're going through. <laughs> she really took her time on the um when we were down that one day in the holodeck. <laughs> Kitty fly good. Okay. Uh, the kid... <laughs> There's catnip in that nebula. <laughs> oh my god, I almost ripped eight. Uh, the ship, uh, the uh, USS Concordia flies through the entrance with the uh, grace of a fist punching through cardboard. Well, probably paper because it's just so much easier. And you find yourselves outside uh, of the interior. Starbase Deep Space 15, a.k.a. Cerberus Station, is in the distance. Transwarp Hub and its eye is uh, in its closer proximity. And the station... So for those of you not who haven't paid any attention to the Deep Space 15, a.k.a. Cerberus Station game, the center of the Carceri Nebula is a derelict, well, no longer derelict, uh, Borg Transwarp Hub. Roughly, the, um, if you imagine the position of the, it being the position of the sun, uh, the uh, station is approximately the distance of Venus to the sun, and the border of the nebula is around the distance of Earth to the sun. So it's all fairly close, cosmically speaking. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any starships present at the moment. Uh, they could be in dock, or they could be out running missions. But that doesn't seem to stop the station from uh, hailing you as soon as you get close. On screen. 
And it turns out to be that of none other than the captain of uh, Deep Space 15, Captain Crawford. Crew of the USS Concordia. Welcome to Deep Space 15. It's good to see you again, Captain. Yes, it's been some time. We are here with the delegates and pick up the rest of our crew. And we have the Admiral on board and his lovely wife. Of course. Um, and he kind of like looks off screen. Uh, proceed to dock yourselves in dry dock one. Um, I shall meet you post haste in the dock. All right. See you in a few. Crawford out, and the communication cuts out. Ensign, um, take us in. And uh, try not to scrape the paint again. Yes, sir. One take... time. <laughs> oh, I love you guys. Okay. <laughs> you heard it. Everybody heard it now. Yeah, it's on record. But, you know, abusive relationships. As I've said. <laughs> I mean, we've come to find out that being on the record isn't always truthful. True. True indeed. <laughs> yes. True indeed. Okay. You fly, uh, you fly into the massive uh, space, do space dock-like doors. Uh, they open slightly too slowly for comfort. But eventually you are made to the interior of the station. Uh, inside the station, you can see that the uh, a, a Sao Paulo class ship is in dry dock. It appears to be undergoing a little bit of uh, maintenance to its port nacelle. Uh, this, of course, would be the USS Leyden. You bring yourself into dock. Permission to di or permission to uh, enter the station is granted. And those who wish to depart and explore the station briefly may do so. Oh, Talazin would be, like, jumping out the pit. How long are we going to <laughs> be here? Uh, you're the captain, and he's the captain. So as long as the two of you, you know, come to an agree agreement, you can stay as long as you want. Okay. Yeah. I just was curious. All right. Cool enough. Works for me. So I basically make an announcement that we have arrived at Deep Space 15, the Cerberus station. Uh, anyone who wants to go aboard is more than welcome to enjoy themselves. Uh, we're going to stay here for at least 24 hours before taking off for our primary mission. Very well. GM, side question for you. Yes. How uh, communication time from uh, the station to Earth? Uh, what's the delay? Or is there a real-time communication uh, set up finally? Uh, real-time communications is still going through the Midas array. Uh, but thankfully, it is a fairly robust system allowing for near real-time. Okay. Yep. Yeah, Moose will stay, on, uh, stay aboard the ship. Okay. So, All right. Okay. I want to take the. Uh, anyone wants to join me to go meet the uh, captain? <laughs> it's more than welcome to join us. Okay, so going on board station will be the captain. Uh, let's just go down the list. Uh, Commander Hadrix? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Uh, I'm assuming. For Lisa, certainly sounded. Uh, for Lisa? You bet I'm going to talk to myself this session. Awesome. Uh, Reinhardt <laughs> staying on ship. And uh, Moore? Moore is heading aboard. Okay. Um, Moose, anyone you want to bring along with you? Any character, support character, etc.? Um... No. And if, I not, he'll, okay. and if not, he'll probably end up getting a visitor on ship anyhow. Entirely possible. <laughs> okay. Um, That's why I wanted to let you guys pick who you wanted to talk to or not talk to. Fair <laughs> enough. 
Uh, I don't have the airlock set piece copied over because, good lord, there were a lot. So, let's just meet in the Eclipse because we were going to end up there anyways. <laughs> okay. Okay. Nope, that's not needed. There we go. <laughs> Hello. Okay, so we're just going to use Theater of the Mind for a second as Captain Crawford and, let's say, Commander Dalrum. Uh, nope, Dalrum's away running mission. Commander Keevan, second in command, third in command. We'll meet Bashir Hadrix for Lisa and Moore and any number of extras that are pouring forth. Captain Bashir, Commander Hadrix. Welcome to Cerberus Station. It's good to be back. It's been a while. It certainly has. How's things going around here? Um, things have been going well. Um, the Vitaris tried to come to us to take a side in their civil war, but once we figured out that they simply wanted technology and information, we decided to stay out of it. Have you had any other incidents with any of the other races? Um... This is the fun part where I have to look in the resources folder because I know there's a thing there. There's a couple of things, and feel free to make things up too because, you know, I'll roll with it. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, things have been interesting with the Draven, for lack of a better term. And... It seems like things have been going relatively well with some of the other species, all things considered. Although the situation with the Togolau hasn't been the greatest thing. We've been trying to help where we can, but It's been hard, to put it lightly. Have you had any further contact with the uh, ancient species? And that, and remind me, Jim, that was the race that we had contact with during like the final session of yep. Cerberus. That was the Salak, the hawking. Mention of the hawking in the uh, uh, resources. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, we've had some. I actually have the USS Hawking doing some research on them. And as he sort of looks around at the crew of the Concordia, because I've got to talk to myself in this scene. Of course. Uh, he sort of locks eyes with Forliza for a second. Good to see that we have a descendant of the first interspecies crew in the Federation here with us. And for as a sort of nods, it's like, it's a pleasure to meet you, Captain Crawford. And I as well, for Lisa. Um, <clears throat> and he'll look over at some of the other crew members. Um, Ensign Moore, from what I've read, you have Quite the impressive record, academically, at least. Uh, something I'm rather proud of, yes. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be serving the Concordia well. My goal, being out here, being able to learn and get to interact with everybody, is going to be quite exciting. Very different than Alpha Sotari. Oh, while we're on the uh, subject of exos, um, 
my current one isn't here, but uh, Commander Hadrix, you'll sure you'll be glad to meet my acting XO until Commander Dolrum returns. Uh, Commander Keevan. Yes, I've heard of Captain Commander Keevan. <laughs> Commander. Commander. <laughs> I see what you did there. I love it. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> I've I saw I've read up on your reports about the various races, um, especially when it comes to their technology. Um, very interesting. Well, at this point, I mean, considering all the times that we've had to deal with the Vatars and the um, Remnant and well, any other species that we've <laughs> that have decided to either shove something through the skin of the hull or decide to try to invade us. We've had a lot of experience, so eh, could be worse. Great, and you got me talking to myself, too. Yep. I saw what you did there. Now, I yeah. think that was on purpose. <laughs> I know oh, that it, was on purpose. It, it, it certainly was. <laughs> um, well, if once you all get settled, um, we should probably meet in the conference room of the station. We have plenty of things to discuss. Doctor, cool. before we leave the station, um, I would like you to actually go down to Medbay. Uh, apparently, there was an amazing surgery done with the uh, chief medical officer with the Vitras. I see. Well... I'm sure you would like to meet the man, meet the man who made that fine achievement yourself. <laughs> I'm waiting for an answer, Captain. Yes, I'll go with you. <laughs> uh, I love it. Okay. Uh, let's do the let's do sick bay first because I think that's interesting. Off to the infirmary. Let's see. Yeah, Captain Crawford. I think our uh, I think your head of security should search our ship. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to make everybody talk to themselves this episode. <laughs> once. Oh, Lord, I'm going to have to do Southern Bell. <laughs> <laughs> do it. Uh, you wander in and you find... Uh, yep, I made him go away. You find no. uh, Dr. Sultan <laughs> uh, currently working through some reports in the front office, uh, searching over the shoulder of his nurse, who is currently not on the set. Whatever. Okay, so Dr. Sulkin is all by himself. Um, apparently it's very quiet right now in the infirmary. Um, you must be... And you must be Lieutenant Commander Sulkin. Salutations, I am. Salutations, um... I am Lieutenant Commander Junot for Lisa. I am the... Chief Medical Officer of the USS Concordia. Uh, this is the Captain, Captain Bashir. Greetings, Lieutenant Commander. Um, during We are taking off into the Expanse, and I've read a report on a procedure you've done on the Vitross with dealing with their cloning and the uh, Emperor. It's, it's the Vitars, sir? Sorry. <laughs> yes, I have reproduct reproduced part of their cloning technology using a high frequency emitter and reprogrammed their emperor to fix his sanity. That's quite fascinating i may say it is fascinating <laughs> i'm sure that was quite the hard task to accomplish i had help 
Okay. A, the uh, one of the uh, the Vatars. No. The research group. <laughs> yes. The, yes, I was gunning both of those. Ah. The you see, uh, Commander Keevan helped me with the programming of the device. Uh, I'm sure if you speak with him, he can get you the technical aspects of it but I can get you a data pad with any of the medical techniques that were used. I also have other reports from other species that have been visited over the year. I see. I'm sure that'll, some, that'll be fairly useful to us as we explore the expanse. I can have Dr. Abbott bring it up to <laughs> as uh <laughs> I can have Dr. Abbott produce a data pad for you and bring it to you right away. Oh, uh, if we're talking on the languages and cultures of some of the species as well, I'm sure we could have Dr. Abbott bring a separate data pad to Ensign Moore, our chief science officer. <laughs> All right, well, I see that you guys have this covered. I am going to go to the. I think I'm going to go check out the um, uh, bar. <laughs> see you guys later. <laughs> I shall see you in the conference room, Captain. Forget it. Every character of mine is now meditating in their own rooms. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Hadrix oh. and Kevin are just enraptured in conversation oh. right now. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. oh shit. Oh, just because I liked it. Okay. Let me zoom forward a little bit. We are going to be at... Oh, wow. It's been a while since we've been in this set, hasn't it? Okay. Oh, I'll look for in two different places. Yep. Everyone's <laughs> everywhere. Let's uh, clear the board. Off <laughs> oh, yeah. things. Everyone's everywhere. Everyone's talking to everyone. Damn it, my split personalities again. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just clearing off the board. Okay. That is, I think, everyone. Yes. Okay. So it's been roughly uh, two or three hours since the uh, USS Concordia has put into dock. Everyone has had their prerequisite self-conversations. And <laughs> at the captain's... My mouth shut. <laughs> I should uh, mention that the USS Arion has been called back from its diplomatic uh, missions with the Remnant Alliance to pick up their proper uh, charges. A proper, A proper team of diplomatic individuals who should prevent that empire from falling apart any faster. So we'll have the captain, we'll have the commander. Sadly, because it was a requested thing, uh, Moose has been brought around, brought along, as long as Feliza, the captain, and Moor. Oh, Dorm's back? Yay! Yep, Dorm. <laughs> yep, Dorm came back. <laughs> He's Just been, for the scene. I, I, I was flying the ship. <laughs> yep, he was flying the ship. Now let's see. We have Dolrum, Keevan, Demos the Slayer, Dr. Sulkin, and I believe that is a sufficient amount of individuals. Oh, no, wait. We're missing the guest of honor, who happens to be Admiral William T. Riker. Okay, that is it, folks. Take it. <clears throat> so, we have several things to go over. Um, first of all, uh, from your perspective, Admiral, we're having the USS Leyden and the Arion helping out with diplomatic efforts with the Remnant Alliance for the foreseeable future. Uh, Captain Bashir, you and the crew de Concordia will essentially be watching their backs as it were. Oh, wow. Uh, no, no, you'll, you'll be watching this station's backs, Captain. That's what 
The Leyden's job is to protect the Arion. The Arion's job is to ensure that the Remnant Alliance doesn't fall into further disarray. It seems without the Borg threat to keep them al aligned, their internal politics have starting to drive, drive them apart, and the Federation does not want this miasma of chaos outside our, one of our more strategic facilities. Well, certainly. Especially with firepower that they could potentially have. Yes. It is, uh, it is uh, both mine and Admiral Zier's tactical assessments that the, uh, that the, that any one species from the, uh, from the Remnant Alliance poses a more significant threat to this station and the Transwarp hub than any of the than any three species combined within the Lasai Expanse. Thus, a more peaceful scientific diplomatic uh, starship and crew was is assigned to the Lasai Expanse for the foreseeable future, while the more tactical nature, tactically oriented vessels shall assist in diplomatic uh, and show the you know and sh show the uh, remnants that we are not a that while we are geared towards peace, we're not pre we are prepared to back up our own. We're, we're prepared to protect our own. Thank you, Admiral. Um, moving on. <laughs> With, I I misinterpreted that note, so I apologize. Oh, I care. <laughs> oh, my apologies. Um. With Riker's stamp of approval. The Concordia will be receiving some auxiliary officers from the species of the Lasai Expanse. Uh, you will have representatives from seven of the species, ranging from the Draven to the Togalau. And let's see here. I also have your first mission, which you will most likely have to leave fairly soon for I'm sure to some of your disappointment with wanting to see what the station has to offer but a uh, question McCall was the whole thing with the Scorby was that on their home world I'm That's assuming their home world. yeah Arkansas okay. gotcha my antennas kind of perk up <laughs> when that's mentioned the we had a planetary restoration team that was helping the Scorpy people. Um, there's a volcanic eruption that threatened the ecosystem of their home world, and we had a team led by one Julia Myers and consisted of about only 20 personnel total. Uh, their last check-in, however, was a week ago, and um, they're past due to check in again. So we would like you to head over there, evaluate what happened, and if worst comes to worst, let me know if I have to start writing some letters to some families. Do we know what caused these eruptions? Um, as far as I'm aware, it was just yeah. natural volcanic eruptions. Yeah. Sorry, G uh, GM insertion. Sorry, I didn't make uh, full mention of this. Uh, so <coughs> when the crawl, the chaotic species that emerged from, you know, chaotic space, whatever, uh -huh. emerged, the warden was activated. That mm -hmm. was the giant platinum head that you may have noticed was not around Deep Space 15 anymore. Um, oh, okay. But with the platinum head comes the platinum body, uh, two platinum arms, two platinum legs, like Voltron. Except, you know, awesome. Well, more awesome. Well, okay, maybe not <laughs> as awesome as Voltron, but still cool and completely original. Patent pending. Um, one of the uh, platinum legs was a mountain, had uh, implanted itself in the Vitars, or in the uh, Scorpi homeworld under the aforementioned volcano. When it was called to activate, ah. it basically tore a continent in half. 
Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, my bad. I shall I shall relay that information that I apparently Crawford has just now learned. That was the appendix part. No one reads the appendix parts on pads. Oh wait. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they have to get them removed. That seems like an important thing to be in the appendix part of the pad. <laughs> <laughs> Caused by warden activation, <gasps> continent split in half. Got it. <laughs> Good to know. That was just a footnote. <laughs> oh. Oh. Done. <laughs> You're not going to get a leg up in this game if you keep doing that. This is what I get when I have you... players that toe the line. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, God, okay. I missed you guys. Uh. But do any of you, crew of the Concordia, have any lingering questions about what you're being sent to do next? It seems like a have... straight, straight voyage mission. You know, just go in, explore, maybe make some diplomatic contact. Just the crew that we seem to have around here um captain admiral um how has contact gone with the scorpion looking at yeah. the admiral who has his data pad out uh, contact with the scorpion has been pleasant it's been difficult to navigate around there interesting method of faster than light travel but overall they are pleasant but they prefer to keep within themselves aside from a group of merchant guilds and diplomats do we have a specific contact uh high proctor weakus is still the leader of the planet but any uh, and he slides a pad of other names over to you. You recognize about four or five of them from your previous mm -hmm. contact. I was looking specifically for the um, awesome looking ranchers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah uh, he is still the uh, singer and the um, I forget the exact term I came up with which is probably was much cooler than what I'm going to come up with now. Uh, the oral sure. priest uh, communicating yes. with the uh, attempting to communicate with the uh, preserver technology yeah uh, more will speak up captain do we have recent readings on the planet and uh, the volcanic eruptions uh, we do and we'll have those sent to you before you depart How many were on this mission? Um, including Ms. Myers, uh, a total of 21 people. One. Well, hopefully we can make contact and bring them back safe. I'm hoping that as well. If we can stop a volcanic eruption in the process, that'd be excellent. <laughs> All well, right. Yeah. Well... Um, I promised my crew that uh, 24 hours before we left, but uh, we might have to leave a little sooner. This is a little more important. As um, soon as I can get the crew back together and uh, we can set up on our way. Of course, but um, in the meantime, I do believe we have a performance somewhat soon. And Crawford just looks over to Riker. <laughs> uh, Admiral Riker. Oh, no. yes. Sorry, go ahead. Yes, the rap, the rapping Vulcan, wasn't it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, uh, Admiral Riker, un un knowing that rank hath privilege, but also that he is also outnumbered, just does a theatrical <laughs> eye roll and says, yes, of course, Captain. I am eager to get on with i'm eager to get on the mission as with the ah, i'm eager to make myself at home within your starbase and i'm looking forward to ingratiating myself with your 
with the station's inhabitants. I do believe that a gesture of goodwill is what is called for, and I believe that your theater has fairly good acoustics. I believe that I will be ready to perform at 1600 hours. Excellent. Uh, crew, senior staff of the Concordia and Cerberus Station, you'll be reporting to the Aldous Crawford Memorial Theater at 1600 hours, and please bring as many of the crew that you would like to bring. Looking over to Bashir. <laughs> Absolutely. As much as I can bring. <laughs> Excellent. Um, if none of you have anything for me, uh, gentlemen, you're all dismissed. All right. Okay. As we start to file out more, we'll go over to uh, Captain Bashir and just uh, kind of to pull him aside. Captain, do you mind if I go back to the ship and start preparing to for the Scorpy? Absolutely not. Uh, you can pull. Um, I have documents on board. Um, my old uh, files on some of their species traits and scientific facts. I was with the Scorpi for some time. Um, <laughs> as I'm kind of um, <clears throat> scratching the back of my head and glad there's no impact pin paths around. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, uh, I actually think I have data of samples of claw material and antennae pieces in my records. <laughs> oh, I will definitely take all the information I can get. Uh, do we have uh, old readings of the planet so I can get a kind of before and after and start looking at what, uh, well, other than the gigantic leg coming out of the ground of maybe something we can do about the eruptions? Probably, I, I, I don't know if we have current stuff unless it's something on file. Um, personally, yes, uh, there would be before the event. Um, the Nighthawk did go to the Scorpio homeworld. Um, and we, we did have quite a few readings on the planet. And um, we made first contact with the Scorpio. And... Um, Again, air quotes. Uh, and uh, we do have quite a few readings of before. I'm sure I can look, uh, ask around and see if I can get anything current from Command or Captain Crawford. Uh, if there's anything from the mission briefing. I will take anything and everything that I can get my hands on to start making the comparison to see if we can do anything for them. All right, Ensign. I'll see. I'll send anything I can find right to your pad. All right. I'll be in the astrometrics lab. All right. Uh, as the Cerberus crew begin to discuss the most recent findings from Dalrum's mission, um, Captain Bashir, you are, despite walking at a reasonable pace, Admiral William Riker catches up with you with relative ease. Yes. Spy Captain. Guy. Admiral? Uh, just a piece of advice, Captain. Uh, despite him having a s seniority in this region, you do not report to Captain Crawford. So, while he has diplomats from most of the species on board, and has a, and as a result has a wide eye into this area of space, do not feel that you have to follow his orders unless they are of a tactical nature defending the station. In which case... Well, the station has tactical, has a greater tactical capability, thus he has command. But that's splitting hairs. Understand, and I appreciate that, Admiral. I said my mind is of a scientific nature, and I understand where it comes to tactical. I will easily take his advice, but otherwise, 
I know I know quite a few. I've gotten most of the readings and everything from these species, and I have dealt with quite a few of them on my own. So I understand what you're saying, and I appreciate it. He makes a half grin and claps you on the shoulder. Just happy to help out. After all, Admiral Zier will be back soon, and, well, my understanding is, well, relationships between Andorians and Rank can get a little more violent than Andorians and humans from time to time. Anyways, I'll see you at 1400. Or, sorry, yeah. Did I say four? Nope, 1600. 1600. See you at 1600. 1600. <laughs> I'm like, 4 o'clock, 14... <laughs> nope, that's not... 4... 1600 hours that's right <clears throat> and with that he wanders he wanders he wanders away uh whistling <laughs> he, he wanders someone's away. had too much pizza yeah. <laughs> he wanders away whistling some catchy jazz number and that is pretty much where i plan on ending the session unless folks have things they want to do just to wrap things up um let's start at the let's start with moose moose anything you'd like to do uh, he's just going to be on the Concordia, uh, tinkering with things. Um, if anyone wants to chat with him, he's probably going to be in engineering. Okay. Uh, for Lisa? Um, uh, for Lisa's going to go talk with Moose. Ah, okay. You'll find Moose in engineering. Let's get to Moose. Okay, so what is Moose doing when Forliza enters? I imagine he's under a console, just pulling some stuff around. Just tweaking stuff. And Forliza will sort of just look down at the console that Moose is under. And they just say, it's like, um, I hope I'm not interrupting you. Hey, will stop for a second and poke his head out. Oh, hey, Doctor. Nope, it's good. What's up? Um... I just wanted to... I'm not sure what the right words are, but, um... You actually served with my grandfather on the Avenger. Oh, yeah, you're, you're actually a direct descendant. I was actually going to try and ask you about that once my shift was done. Yes, um, Primari was my grandfather. Um, hmm. memory serves, uh, he unfortunately passed several years ago, but he lived a long life. That was good to hear. Yeah, I wasn't on the Avenger for long, unfortunately. Uh, I think we made it about six months before Starfleet recalled me. I'm sorry to hear about that. Yeah, they wanted to integrate Betty into more ships, so I had to bring her along with me. And then start working on the refits for the other NX classes. Yeah, so it was fun. I have to ask, um, and it'll sort of just take a seat somewhere, whether it's on the floor, or there's like some sort of chair nearby. Um... I mean, what was it like serving on, I mean, the first interspecies crew? Uh, for me, it was fine. And I've already worked with other species during the Romulan War. I was used to working with, you know, the Andorians, to a point, and Vulcans, a couple of Tellarites. So working on a ship with uh, the rest of them wasn't that much different. Hmm. Technology was a pain in the ass, though. Trying to work in a human power grid with a Vulcan tractor beam and enduring shield array and Tellarite life support that was a pain until we started actually making our own. Let's see. Um and you can you can tell like they're sort of trying to come up with like talking points for having a bit of a hard time. Um I know you were only there briefly, but um how was their captain? 
We had two captains. We had a Tellerite. He was, eh, you know, was a Tellerite. He was good. And then we had an Andor Andorian. And he was good as well. But I didn't get a chance to really serve with him too much. Shortly after he came on there, as I said, I got transferred off. Seemed like a good fit, though. He liked painting. <laughs> oh, it's, um... I guess it's good to meet somebody who was on that crew that's the only one that's still alive, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, not, you know, by choice and accident, really. Of course. But, yeah, there was, there was a couple of my old Axanarian friends that are still alive, which is surprising. Hmm. But... It's different. Back then, <laughs> everyone was discovering everything. It was sailing the uncharted. <laughs> I missed out on that. And then from what I understand, with the 23rd century, it was more like the Wild West. You know, you had ships going out, doing some exploration, but mostly the peacekeeping. And then the 24th was the Age of Diplomacy. So, kind of glad sure. that the 25th is more about exploration again. <laughs> I'm sure you're glad you're part of the mission you were originally on, in essence, I guess. Yeah, that's the other reason why I wanted to stay on this ship. The fact that she's self-sustaining, theoretically anyways, you get to go out into the deep space and explore. Good, um, well, I should probably start doing checkups on some of the auxiliary officers that I have to take care of now, so, um, uh, it was nice talking to you. It was nice talking to you as well. And for need for Lisa, we'll just walk out of engineering. All right, uh, Ensign Moore. And anything you're doing? I would be in astrometrics, uh, putting up the planetary data, and probably listening to just random music. Fair enough. Uh, Commander Hadrix. I think he would be just um, trying to get himself line, you know, set up with the new crew and looking over the new crew rotation, you know, okay. the new crew coming aboard. So, just book work. Okay. Uh, so, major question, uh, three or four shifts? Mm, as commander, I'm going to say we should be on a three shift rotation. Okay. Alpha, beta, gamma. Gotcha. And finally, uh, Captain Bashir, anything for you? Yes. Um, nothing major, but yes, I am setting up my ready room and uh i have replicated a painting on my wall mm -hmm. of um captain singrell on a mountaintop with the volcano exploding as he's fighting off um what was it a gorn it was, it was a tholian a tholian yes <laughs> nice <laughs> All right. And as you mount it, the uh, end credits shall roll. And that is the end of session zero, folks. Woo. So thank you all for not blowing up the ship on uh, their first. Even though session. we tried. Yeah, I'm, you twice. literally tried. <laughs> but <laughs> we didn't blow it up much. Yeah, just a bit. So uh, thank you all for playing. Uh, we, w we have moved to a weekly schedule. So we are on every Friday. Uh, as long as GM Sanity ma it maintains itself. Uh, we will be back next week, and we will see what happens with the Scorpy and the leg that destroyed a continent. So, until next time, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Later.